All right, hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, so recently, the Game Awards like voting thing came out. Uh, I think it was uh, like four days ago. I think so. I'm, I'm kind of late. So yeah, I guess let's go ahead and vote. This is sort of Sparking Zero, uh, Sparking Zero uh, related. If it, you know, we'll, we'll see if we'll see if it's on the category for anything. Uh, so I did get a sneak peek of the Game of the Year categories. Or the, the game of the year like nominees, which is yeah, the, these six games. So first one we got. Oh, I guess I guess let me sign in first so I can actually vote. Give me give me one second. All right, I just connected the account. So the first game we have Astro Bot, Balatro for second, third one Black Myth Wukong, fourth one Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, and the fifth one Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and last one is Metaphor. So out of all of these games, I've only played Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, so that's the only one I can basically vote for and have an opinion. So, uh, do I think it's gonna win Game of the Year? Probably not. I still do think, um, probably Black Myth Wukong will probably, uh, win. Um, I've heard a lot of backlash on Shadow of the Earth Tree being on Game of the Year because it's a DLC and it's locked behind, you know, you gotta buy Elden Ring yourself. But at the same time, that's how good of, the, of a DLC the game is, so I guess it deserves a, a nominee place. And in Metaphor, I have heard a lot of good things about it, but I just haven't played it. Black Myth Wukong has seen a lot of gameplay on it, so it looks pretty good as well. I think it hit like 2 million players on Steam as well, so there's that. The Latro, I don't think it's gonna win. It's it's nice that it got a nominee because I heard it's, it's a pretty good like a pretty fun like gambling game. I hop on it like one time maybe. And then Astro Bot. Um, I've played the first one, which is Astro's Playroom, which is very fun. Uh, I don't think it's gonna win Game of the Year, but there it is as a nominee as well. Yeah, the only thing I can very uh, pretty much vote for is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah, I think it's a very good like remake of you know og final fantasy 7 uh the open world aspect is very fun uh the story mode got uh, gets better as well just like uh, not to say too much stuff for spoilers but like um it does kind of branch off from the original final fantasy 7 it, ha it kind of has its own like story mode or it has its like own like story original i would say but yeah here's my vote my vote for game of the year Next one is Best Game Direction, awarded for Outstanding Creative Vision and Innovation in Game Direction and Design. Yep, oh, we got the same option, it's okay. Um, I guess I just, I'll just vote for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth again. It's just that the only thing that's holding me back from like this game being so perfect is because like the PS5 when I was playing it, like some of the environments were, were pretty bad, like the grass and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's fine, yeah, we're, okay. We'll go 7 Rebirth, let's keep on voting. And we got Best Narrative. And there's no 6 options, it's only 5 options, okay. So we got Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Metaphor, Senua Saga Hellblade, and Silent Hill 2. Uh, so out of all of these games, I have played Like a Dragon as well and Rebirth, so I could either vote for these two. Uh, yeah, Metaphor, I've only seen like a bit of gameplay, heard is good. Uh, Hellblade 2, I have not seen any gameplay of this game, so I can't vote that. And Silent Hill 2, I haven't seen any gameplay, but I've seen like a lot of people like say, saying like, this game should have been nominee for game of the year. So I heard this game's pretty good as well. But out of these two options, uh, best storytelling and narrative development in the game. Dude, that scene with... Uh, Okay. I guess we'll go Rebirth still. Yeah, we'll go Rebirth. Not to say too much spoilers, but like, like, like a Dragon Infinite Wolf does have, you know, a lot of good scenes as well, and like good storytelling, but I guess I'll go Rebirth again. And we got Best Art to Direction, only five options again, okay. For Outstanding Creative and or Technical Achievement in Artistic Design and Animation. Okay. Uh, Astrobot, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Metaphor, and Neva. I've never heard of Neva, so can't really vote for that. 
Um, I haven't played any of these games. Well, I've only played Elden Ring, which is the base DLC, so there's that. Um, I guess... I'm tied between Metaphor and... <coughs> Sorry about that, I'm still a little bit sick. I'm tied between Metaphor and, uh... Black Myth Wukong. Like, the gameplay I've seen from both of these games, like... The art style is pretty cool. I'll, pr I'll probably go with Black Myth Wukong, I guess, yeah. I, I guess I am. Yep, there we go. I think, I think Black Myth Wukong will win this category. Best score and music. For outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and slash or licensed soundtrack. So we got Astro Bot. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Metaphor, Silent Hill 2, and Stellar Blade. So Stellar Blade does get on one of the categories at least, which is cool. I've never played it yet, I hope I'll play it in the future. So I, I haven't listened to like any of the music for any of these games besides Final Fantasy VII of course, because I played the game. So I guess I'll vote for a Rebirth, because I don't really have a say for any of the soundtracks for the other games, so boom. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then we got Best Audio Design. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. So we got Astro Bot, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, okay. We got Rebirth, Hellblade 2, Silent Hill 2. Yeah, again, I've only played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so I guess I vote for that. But like, off of the first time I played Astro's Playroom, like the like the the immersive PS5 experience and stuff like that, like the controls and like the audio and stuff in this game. You know, if it's anything like that in the sequel, which it should be a bit better probably, I think Astro Bot will probably win, but I just gotta vote for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So there we go. Best Performance Awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, or performance capturing. Okay, so we got Brianna White. I don't know who she. I don't. I don't know any of the actors. So, but she plays in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Life is Strange, Double Exposure, Hand to Tell, Hum Humberly Gonzalez, Star Wars Outlaws. Okay, uh, interesting. Luke Roberts, Silent Hill Two, Melina Jurgens, uh, Senua Saga, Hellblade Two. Uh, I don't know any of the actors or anything like that. So. I, I would just vote for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There we go. I, there we go, there we go. Uh, innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software and or hard, hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. Innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software that is pushing medium forward by adding features. <laughs> So what's like on the most platforms, like variety? <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops 6? I heard this game is like, at minimum like 100 gigs, I don't know, like... I don't know, Diablo 4, Dragon Age, The Bellguard, Prince of Persia, Star Wars Outlaws, I mean... Honestly, I go Prince of Persia? I, I, uh, I don't know what this category really means, like, how many platforms the game is on, like these guys. Because like, recognizing software by forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience, so just more platforms and stuff, right? <laughs> uh, I guess Call of Duty Black Ops 6, but I've heard a lot, I've just heard a lot of good things about Prince of Persia as well, so I guess we'll just vote for that. Boom, there we go. <laughs> games for impact, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or a message. Uh, I have never played any of these games, so Closer to Distance, Indica, Neva, Life is Strange, Double Exposure, Sino Saga Hellblade, and Tales of Kanzara. I guess I'll vote for Hellblade too, that's what the only thing I've like, kind of heard about, so here we go. <coughs> I'm drinking some water, hold on. Best Ongoing Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player's experience over time. 
Oh, well, I don't think Hell Divers 2 is gonna win. I don't think so. Because I heard they got a lot of backlash at one point, so. Because of like the whole like P PlayStation accounts and stuff like that. And them nerfing weapons, so. I don't think they're gonna be winning this one. Uh, we also got Destiny 2, Diablo 4, Final Fantasy 14, and Fortnite. Um. I think Fortnite, right? Fortnite's gonna win for sure, I think. Alright, I put up a uh, Steam charts here, so let's see uh, let's see how many people are playing Destiny 2, let's see. 5,885, okay. I mean, that's only on Steam, so it'll probably be like, uh, probably more on PS5 and like Xbox and stuff. What about Diablo? 10,000, okay. We obviously can't check Fortnite, but let's check uh, Final Fantasy. 14. What? Really? That low? Damn. Damn, okay. I mean, yeah, it's probably, it probably has more players on like other platforms, but still, damn, okay. And we got Hell Divers 2. 20k, okay. Um, I guess I'll vote for it just Fortnite, I guess. I, I don't really hear any backlash for Fortnite. I hear it like, it's, they still do stuff, you know, so. Best community support. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity, and game updates patches. Alright, so we got Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, Helldivers 2, and No Man's Sky. Now, I think I did hear about Baldur's Gate 3, like the developers, they're gonna bring mod support to console, which is huge, so. That's hey, that, that's pretty good community support, right? They're, they're bringing mod support to console players, so. I might just vote for them. Uh, Fortnite, I heard they've been doing some good updates as well. I'm not too sure about the other three games. I, I don't know about Hotivers 2 as well, so. I guess we'll just vote for Baldur's Gate 3, there you go. Best community support, there you go. <coughs> oh, okay. Best independent game. For outstanding creative and tech technical achievement in a game made outside of tri of the traditional publisher system. <coughs> Wait, what does this mean? Oh, I guess um uh, like independent studios, right? So we got Animal Well, Bellatro, Lo Lorelei, and the Laser Eyes, Neva, UFO 50. The only one I've, I've only heard about is Bellatro, so I guess I'll just vote for Bellatro. So there we go. Best Debut Indie Game. For the best debut game created by, by a new independent studio. Animal Well, Bellatro, Manor Lores, Pacific Drive, The Plucky Squire. Uh, I've already heard about, uh, yeah, Bellatro and Mana Lures. Um, I haven't really seen too much gameplay on Mana Lures, but I guess I'll look for Bellatro, that's why. I, I haven't played either of them, so there we go. Best mobile game. For the best game playable on a mobile device. So we got AFK Journey, Bellatro, Pokemon Trading Card Game Pocket. Yeah, this game's kind of fun, honestly. Uh, Woodering Waves, I still do play, Zen Zone Zero, I have seen gameplay, but I haven't really, like, played it, so. Uh, so between these two, which I have played, I do play right now. Uh, I guess I'll go Woodering Waves, because it's just, honestly, more stuff to do than Pokemon TCG Game Pocket, TCG Pocket, because all you do in this game is mainly just open packs, packs every 12 hours and get off, do your dailies, and that's it. I mean, you could do battles and stuff, but it's like, there's no like, I don't know if there's like a ranked like rewards or something like that. Yeah, Wooden Waves, I just think it's more fun. Yeah, there you go. Best mobile game. Hope they win. Best VR slash AR. Okay, well, I don't really play VR like that. Uh, you got Arizona Sunshine Remake, Asgore's Wrath 2, Batman Arkham Shadow, Metal, Hell Slinger VR, Metro Awakening. I, I guess I vote for Batman. I mean, dude, it's, it's Batman. I also saw him like, uh, I think his ga the game was featured in like, uh, in like a Meta Quest Three bundle. I think they yeah, added. There, there we go. <coughs> <coughs> 
best action game for the best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat. Ooh, this would be hard. I never played any of these games besides Hell Divers 2, but. So we got Black Myth Wukong, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Oh, let me drink more water. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so we got uh, Black Myth Wukong, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Hell Divers 2, Stellar Blade, and Warhammer 40k. Um. Shit, out of all of these, I guess. Dude, this is actually kind of hard for me. Because, like, I have seen gameplay of all of these games, like, enough to, like, see, like, the combat and stuff. Helldiver 2 is the only one I played personally, but I don't think it's gonna win here. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is cool, sure. Black Myth Wukong is kind of cool with the combat. Stel Stellar Blade and Black Myth Wukong are kind of the same, like, Obviously not entirely the same, but like, like a little bit the same in combat. You know, Warhammer Space Marine 2. Like the combat I've seen in Warhammer, dude, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know. Uh, dude, I don't know, man. I, I guess I'll vote for... Black Myth Wukong, I guess? I, I guess. It, that, that, that category is honestly kind of hard for me to win. Yeah, there we go. Uh, best Action Slash Adventure. For the best action slash adventure game, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Okay. Um, Astro Bot, Prince of Persia, Silent Hill 2, Star Wars Outlaws, and Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Okay, I've, I did not expect that game to be on there. I've barely seen it in any gameplay in that. Um, I guess all of these games, I'll vote for Astro Bot? Yeah, I'll vote for Astro Bot. There we go. Best action adventure. Best RPG for the best game design with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Okay, interesting. Dragon's Dogma 2, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Like a Dragon Infinite Well, Metaphor. Best game design with rich player character customization and progression. Honestly, like... That's probably be Infinite Wealth compared to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh no, probably Shadow of the Earth Tree. No, that, that has way more customization and stuff like that and progression. Even though it's still a DLC. I would say Rebirth, but like the customization and like progression and... This, you know, doesn't have any multiplayer, so there's that. And the same thing for this one. Like, I guess I just vote for Shadow of the Earth Tree. There we go. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Because, like, the thing about Rebirth, like, you know, it's like the last game, you know, remake. You just, you know, get better sword over time. And I think there is costumes changes that you can do in the game, but, like, there's that, I guess, but... I, I, I just think Elden, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree still win that, so there we go. Oh, how many more categories then? Okay. Uh, best Fighting. Uh, so there, oh, there we go. We got Sparking Zero, Grand Blue, Marvel vs. Capcom, Multiverse, Tekken 8. Oh, well, between all these five, between these five, is either going to be Tekken 8 or Sparking Zero? Um, I'm obviously a little bit more biased towards Spark and Zero, so I'll just vote Spark and Zero. There we go. Uh, best family for the best game appropriate for family play. Uh, Astro Bot? Is, is it multiplayer? Because it's on this category. Is it multiplayer? I, I haven't seen any multiplayer gameplay on this. Okay, interesting. Uh, Princess Peach, Super Mario Jam Boy. I have played a couple hours of this, so I'll probably just vote for that. Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. The Plucky Squire. Okay, I guess I vote for Super Mario Jambori. It's just another not a typical Super Mario Party game, you know. Best Sim slash strategy. Best game focused on real-time return-based simulation strategy gameplay. Age of Mythology, Frostpunk 2, Kunitsu Gami, Mana Lords, and Unicorn Overlord. Overlord. I mean I guess I vote for Mana Lords. I haven't heard any of these games besides uh I haven't heard of any of these games besides Mandalore, so there's that. Oh, best sports slash racing. 
F1 24, EA Sports FC 25, NBA 2K 25, Top Spin 2K 25, uh, WWE 2K 24. Uh, I would pick out of these two options, but like, NBA 2K25, like, I've, I've seen it being discounted half off, like, already, so I, I don't know if that says anything or not. Uh, I guess I'll vote for EA Sports FC25. Like, I've seen NBA 2K25 already been, like, 60% off or something in store, so it's like, I, I don't know if that says anything or not, but yeah, there we go. Uh, best in multiplayer. Uh, yep, online multiplayer gameplay and design, co-op, massively multiplayer experiences. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Helldivers 2, Mario Party Jamboree, Tekken A, Warhammer. <coughs> um, I'm tied between Helldivers 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 6, honestly. Well, if I'm tied between these two, I'm the only one I played is Helldivers 2, so I guess I have to vote for this one. Because the co-op in Helldivers 2 is, is still pretty fun, so yeah, there's that. Best Adaptation. Recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentic, authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Uh, so I have watched Arcane Season 1, but not Season 2 yet. I didn't watch Fallout yet, but I heard it's pretty good. Uh, the Sonic movie, I heard it's pretty good as well. Now, the, the Yakuza show, I have watched it. And I would say it's like the definition of mid, I would say. It's not, it's not good, it's not bad, it's like, it's whatever. Not to give too much spoilers, but it's like, you know, it's, it's it's a different story compared to the other games, so there is that. Yeah, Tomb Raider, I didn't watch this one, okay. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure Arcane just wins this, so it's just both for Arcane. It's, Arcane's always good, so there is that. Oh, most anticipated game, okay. Recognize an announced game that has demonstrated, demonstrate, demonstrated, illustrated potential to push the game gaming medium forward. So got Death Stranding 2. I, I have Death Stranding 1. Like I actually have it like in like with me, but like I haven't played it yet. We got Ghost of Yote, uh, GTA 6, Metroid Prime 4, Beyond, Monster Hunter Wilds. So I'm tied between these three games. I think GTA 6 is gonna win because it's it's GTA obviously. But my personal vote is gonna be Ghost of Yote. Like Ghost of Tsushima was one of my favorite is is one of my favorite games of all time, so. I, I gotta go Ghost of Yote for my, my personal vote. But I, I think GTA 6 is gonna win. Content Creator of the Year. For a streamer or content creator has made an important and positive impact on the community in 2024. <laughs> Use this case so. Sure, right? This case so. <coughs> and uh, I don't know who this person is. Elo Juan. There we go. Uh, Tech Hole Gamers. Typical Gamer. And Usada Pecora. Alright, uh, the only one I've, I watch, like, through, like, shorts and sometimes on stream is Queso, so I, I guess I'm going for Queso. There we go. Boom, Queso. There we go. Nice. Uh, we got a couple more votes. Best esports game. For the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players. Irrespective of genre or platform. So we got CS2, Dota 2, League. Mobile Legends, wait, Mobile Legends? Okay, I, I, I gotta check out their esports. Okay, all right. I've got Valorant. Uh, so between my opinion, it's gonna be Counter Strike Two or League. Probably League. League is just, just more bigger, right? So I, I guess vote for League. All right, playing League yourself could be bad, but like watching pro players play League is pretty fun. So there's that. Best esports athlete. The esports athlete judged to be the most outstanding performance and conduct in 2024. Uh, 33 Alexib. That's a. These guys are CS2 players, right? I, I don't know about this guy. I, I know. Pretty sure this guy's a CS CSGO player. Chovy Faker. We got Zayu who is also CSGO. I'm pretty sure. And Zim I don't. I don't know him. Okay. <laughs> Bro, we gotta go with Faker, bro. Fake, I, I think Faker already won an award, did he? Did he already win an award in, before for our best esports athlete? I, th I think he did, but... There, yeah, he's, he's still my personal pick, so there we go. 
Best esports team, recognizing a specific esports team, judge the most outstanding for performance. We got Billy Billy. We got Bin in the middle. Bin, my goat Bin. Gen G. Navi. T1. And Team Liquid. I mean, I guess vote for T1. Honest, I would have voted for Billy Billy Gaming if they won Worlds, but T1 did. So, you know, gotta give them more, more awards. So, there we go. Best esports team, T1. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, I guess there's gonna be more rounds. Three rounds, three chances chance to vote. Uh, I guess I could make another video when all the rounds open up. So I, I guess there's that. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Those are my votes so far for, I guess, what? Was that like round zero what we did? Like, cause it says round one opens December 2nd. So I guess what we did was like the preliminary, uh, something like that. Yeah, th those are my opinions on the categories and stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.